Welcome back, everyone, to the Evidence-Based Hair Podcast. I'm dermatologist and hair loss specialist, Dr. Jeff Donovan. I'm also the director of the Donovan Hair Academy. The Academy educates the public about hair loss, and we have training programs for hair loss practitioners as well. Hair loss affects all people around the world, and so we welcome all people to our programs. The Donovan Hair Academy runs the EBHF, or the Evidence-Based Hair Fellowship. The EBHF is the world's most comprehensive training program for hair loss specialists. Our EBHF graduates ultimately complete two years of very intensive training and are some of the best trained specialists in the world. The podcast that you're listening to right now is the official podcast of the Donovan Hair Academy. In this podcast, I review studies that are changing how we think about hair loss. I'll introduce them to you, help you make sense of them, and give you my thoughts on how a given study just might change how we diagnose or treat hair loss. And as a reminder, the podcast is for educational purposes and shouldn't be considered a substitute for medical advice. I very much enjoy offering the Evidence-Based Hair podcast. I enjoy being able to join you for our public webinars throughout the year and our ever-popular Question of the Week program. But before we begin today's podcast, I'd like to add that your support really makes a difference. And I thank all those who have supported us over the years. We have some very big goals for the next 10 and 20 years, not only in our podcasts and our webinars and our Question of the Week program and our training programs for healthcare practitioners, but in our multiple tireless efforts to ensure that the principles of evidence-based medicine will always be our guide in this most perplexing and complicated world of hair loss. If you'd like to learn more about our programs and projects that we're currently fundraising for, or to make a donation, please visit the Donovan Hair Academy at donovanhairacademy.com forward slash projects. And now on to our podcast. Today I'd like to review an interesting study published in the International Journal of Dermatology titled Treatment of Central Centrifugal Cicatricial Alopecia with Topical Metformin 10% Cream. Case Report and Review of the Literature. I really like this study. We are increasingly interested around the world in the use of metformin, both orally and topically, in the management of CCCA. We spoke last week about this very nice study looking at the gene changes with oral metformin. Today we're going to be talking about topical metformin. CCCA, as you know, is a scarring alopecia, scarring alopecia that affects black women, very much underdiagnosed. <laughs> the literature uh, still cannot agree on the prevalence of this condition, but certainly may be as high as 10 or 15% of black women. A hair loss condition which can affect multiple areas of the scalp often starts centrally and spreads outwards, but as we've come to realize in the last many years, CCCA not only affects the central scalp, but can affect a number of areas uh, of the scalp as well. So be on the lookout for those atypical presentations. First-line agents for CCCA, in my opinion, are topical steroids, steroid injections, topical trichotillomas, doxycycline, and related tetracyclines, topical minoxidil, and then gentle hair care. And so when I see a patient with CCCA, these are the agents that I want to know have they been used? And if not, can we use them? And then if we're looking for what else, what else can I use? The patients used topical steroids, steroid injections, doxycycline. Well, then we turn to our second line options. Then we turn to options like topical metformin, oral metformin, oral minoxidil, PRP, and now increasingly, maybe even the JAK inhibitors are on that list. But I think in 2024, we can't ignore the fact that the first-line options are still steroid injections, topical steroids, doxycycline, and um, topical trichotillomas, coupled with gentle hair care. You know, I see a lot of patients with CCCA, and I'm absolutely convinced that, you know, these second-line options are really exciting. Metformin, topical metformin, oral metformin, PRP. But I don't think they come close to what these first-line options can offer. But they are very much part of the second-line category. And so this recent paper in the International Journal of Dermatology looked at the use of 
topical metformin for CCCA. I really like this study. The concept of using topical metformin is not new. The excitement started in 2020 when a study published in JAD case reports described two patients who benefited from topical 10% metformin. One patient was using topical metformin with clobetazole, and the other patient in that study was using metformin with 5% minoxidil and steroid injections. And that was this study in JAD case reports titled Hair Regrowth in Two Patients with Recalcitrant Central Centrifugal Cicatricial Alopecia After Use of Topical Metformin. The paper is free online, so, so do check it out if you're not familiar with it. But here we have this very nice study looking at another report of topical metformin in a patient with CCCA. The authors here present a 54-year-old African woman who had been experiencing significant hair loss in the central scalp for about three years. Physical examination and trichoscopy showed the typical features of CCCA, and a biopsy confirmed a diagnosis of CCCA. She was started on topical minoxidil and clobetazole twice daily for about 14 months, but it did not help. And because it did not help, these researchers looked at what else are we going to use? And that what else are we going to use turned them to topical metformin. And so they introduced a combination of topical metformin cream applied once daily and minoxidil lotion used twice daily. And the patient did this for a prolonged period of time. After eight months, the authors noticed a significant amount of hair growth in the vertex area with new follicles appearing and terminal hairs now developing. And trichoscopy showed less perifollicular scaling. The patient tolerated the topical 10% metformin quite well, and there was no side effects. So I really like this study. We need ongoing studies of topical metformin in CCCA. And I've been using topical metformin on and off since that 2020 study, and haven't been overly convinced that this is, you know, a miracle medication, but it certainly may have some role. And uh, I think studies like this are really needed as we go about thinking about how do we use topical metformin in CCCA. I think the world's really excited about CCCA. I think there's a lot of topical metformin being used out there. There's very few studies. And certainly, as time goes on, I wonder, are people getting the degree of benefit that we all hope for with topical metformin? And I'm not sure. I'm not overly convinced that uh, this medication uh, works that well, but it does have some benefit. The problem I see with topical metformin is that the original study in JAD case reports said you compound topical metformin in lipoderm cream. What I see in the world is that people are compounding metformin in whatever they want. And so instead of having one formulation that we can compare worldwide, we have a hundred formulas. Some of these formulas are probably good. Some of these formulas are probably not good. And so that's the big challenge with compounding. But nevertheless, here's our third patient with benefit from topical 10% metformin in CCCA. I really like this study in the International Journal of Dermatology and congratulate the authors for this very nice report. We learned last week that you know, metformin affects these genes related to fibrosis and genes related to inflammation. And so it's having a direct effect on these pathways that we feel are very, very relevant. And so we need more studies in this particular area and larger studies, of course. But this is a, a nice report of a very safe medication that helped a person who was otherwise refractory to clobetazole and minoxidil. The study showed a benefit, but um, the before and afters in this particular study weren't, um, you know, particularly overwhelming, that uh, there was a huge benefit. So it's difficult to get a sense of exactly how much this helped, but um, nevertheless, it, it did help, but it did not reverse this particular patient's hair loss. And some degree of CCCA is probably permanent. What we have to remember in this study is this patient failed clobetazole and minoxidil and then went on to metformin and minoxidil. 
This patient didn't go on to other first-line options, didn't go on to steroid injections, didn't go on to doxycycline, didn't go on to trichrolimus. Tacrolimus. So what we don't know is, maybe, just maybe, if this person had steroid injections and doxycycline, they would have had even better results than metformin could bring them. So we have to always keep that in mind. Right now, in 2024, metformin's probably a second-line option. It sits there in the second-line category with oral metformin, topical metformin, PRP, um, JAK inhibitors. But it does something. And I think this is really encouraging, and I think that it's nice to have safe options as we think about treating CCCA. And so, as we round out 2024, I, I keep my options of first-line options as steroid injections, topical steroids, trichrolimus, doxycycline, and topical minoxidil. And topical metformin and oral metformin are still in the second-line category, but exciting options. So stay tuned for more studies. And I would you know, certainly encourage people that are using topical metformin, and there must be a ton of topical metformin use out there. That's how we work in, in dermatology, and that's how we work in the hair world. We have exciting studies like this study in 2020, and then the world, the world goes crazy using these drugs. That's what we saw with the use of pioglitazone in LPP. That one case report came out with tons of studies, and then uh, the, the, the treatment kind of fizzled out as we realized that mm, maybe it doesn't work long term all that well, and maybe it has some detrimental side effects. And so I know there's a ton of people using topical um, uh, metformin, and so the key thing I'm, that we need to know as a worldwide community is how well does it really work? And how are we compounding it? And is there some compounding formulas that are better than others? Uh, I continue to compound it in lipoderm cream because that's how the original 2020 study was done. Um, and I don't generally get too fancy, but there's a lot of formulations that I'm seeing with compounded metformin. Very nice study. Larger studies are needed, and uh, I thank the authors very much for this nice study. Next week, we're back talking about alopecia areata. We'll talk about a very nice study in the Archives of Dermatologic Research, looking at dupilumab in alopecia areata, a very nice study by Dr. Gutman Yasky. And I look forward to reviewing this next week with you. Thank you so much for joining me for today's podcast. It's my belief that education and educational endeavors like this podcast can help clinicians acquire new knowledge, which can ultimately help patients. And education can also help hair loss researchers to ask better research questions. And better research questions can give clear answers about how to best diagnose or how to best treat hair loss. And ultimately, this will see benefit in our patients with hair loss. And education can also empower patients to acquire new knowledge so they can engage in critical discussions with their hair loss practitioners, which hopefully will lead to improved care. At the Academy, we're really proud to be able to offer educational programs for clinicians, as well as educational programs for the public. And if you're a practitioner, interested in studying hair loss at an advanced level, you might consider applying to the Evidence-Based Hair Fellowship, or EBHF. This is an intense program, but it's a program that equips you with the necessary skills to really help patients. Our next iteration starts January 2026, and we'd love to have you in the program. You can learn more about the EBHF by contacting our administrators at info at donovanhairacademy.com. That's it for this week. I look forward to seeing you next week for another episode of the Evidence-Based Hair Podcast. Thanks so much.